Hey Fabricators, welcome back to Advancing Fabric, where we are diving once again into the brand new product of Microsoft Fabric. Now, we've done some overview videos, we've talked about all the different bits and pieces that come in this one giant box. But, diving into each of these experiences, there's a load more we can learn, looking at each one in particular. So we're going to do a bit of a series of videos, looking at each of the experiences and saying how does it work, what's good, how, what you need to know before you can get started. And today, for the first one, it made sense to start with probably the thing that's changed the most, which is the data warehouse experience. So if you're coming from Synapse and you're used to serverless SQL pools or dedicated SQL pools, this isn't quite the same as either. This is a new, brand new engine based on the similar that you kind of need to know how to get started and work with it. Now, if it is your first time around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments. Are you working with Fabric yet? Are you playing with it? What do you want to know about? What videos do you want us to do in the future? Let us know and we'll see what we can do. And if you're getting started with Spark, you're trying to learn the Synapse engineering side of Fabric, then don't forget we do have our Spark Fundamentals course on our training platform with the Spark Fans discount. Just use that coupon code. Alrighty. Now, getting stuck and digging into the whole of uh, Fabric, it, we cannot do it without our chief fabricator. So, Craig, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Hello again. That name's not going to get old. <laughs> no. Never. Alrighty. Okay. So, you're going to take us through the data warehousing side of Fabric today, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, like we start with this kind of familiar view, that landing page within Fabric. Um, but this time we're going to click on the Synapse Data Warehouse um, section. And that takes us into essentially the landing page for that persona, that experience. Um, we can see we can create things like a new warehouse. We can create a, a warehouse sample to kind of work with sample data, which is great for just being able to play about during the preview. Um, and we can also create a data pipeline as well. But I have some of this prepared already. So if we jump over to our workspaces that we explored uh, last time, if I go into UK sales, I've got all these familiar artifacts in there. And I'm going to go down to our UK sales gold uh, warehouse. So I'll click into that and that loads that data warehouse view. Now there's different tabs down the bottom that allow us to look at the data, it allows us to look at uh, queries and also the data model that we're building. But this is that familiar view of our uh, data that's kind of in the same kind of um, way that we would see a relational database, except yes. we've got things ordered a little bit differently. We can see that from a, a schema perspective. So if we were back in the Synapse days, we'd have gone to data, we'd see our databases, we could see our various things. And it's, it's a similar idea, but the artifacts are called slightly different and organized slightly different, but same difference, yeah. right? Just a database. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, and here I've got uh, different schemas. I've actually defined a new schema for this because you moaned about it so much last time. I mean, if you want uh, to use DBO, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but beyond that, we can also see stored procedures. We can see functions and views. And you'll probably recognize that stored procedures weren't there when we had uh, Synapse Serverless. They were secretly there, but they weren't actually uh, exposed in the UI. So we can see stored procedures now, uh, which is great. I've got a little example one in there to pull back my sales. Um, if I go down to my queries, there's also a place for me to save the queries that I'm working on. And actually, if I switch over to the query tab, it will automatically create a SQL query one, and it's saving that automatically in the background to that My Queries area, which could result in plenty of those My uh, SQL query one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so every time I've... you want to play a bit of SQL, trying to do something, it's going to create an object for you. It's going to save that object. So it's going to save you from accidentally losing your work, but yeah. you kind of need to get into the good habit of deciding, do I want to keep that? Or is that just a one-off? Do I need to close and discard yeah. that? Or do I actually want to save that? But that's fine. Yeah, exactly. And the great thing about this is it's really only your view. It's your queries that you're seeing. Um, what you can do if you've got a specific query that you don't want to have deployed as a stored procedure or something um, or anything like that, we can actually share them. So I can mark any of these uh, queries to move to the shared queries section. Um, and I've got a shared query down there as well, so that's really handy. So I mentioned that we are in the uh, warehouses view. 
There's also the ability to add another warehouse. So we went in through UK Sales Gold, and that's what we're looking at. But if I click on Plus Warehouses, I can actually see two other options here, and those are the SQL endpoints. Now, we can cover this in another video, but certainly when you provision a, a lake house, it automatically creates a SQL endpoint for that lake house. So we've got the two lake houses that we created for silver and bronze, and those have those automatic SQL endpoints created there. And I can actually just bring them in. I can run queries from these. Um, I can see the data that's in them and pull that information back. But the one caveat being that those are read-only uh, endpoints. So if I open up this query, for example, I'm just going to change all the order quantity and the sales detail uh, and multiply it by 10. That's fine, right? That's a normal query you would want to run. Absolutely. That's how we do our sales reporting. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, so that'll run, out, that'll run under the warehouse and that's fine. That will update success. If I go to the lake house update and I look at a similar table, so UK sales silver, DBO, and then our sales order detail, if I run that within there, it's going to tell me that those DML s statements are not supported for that table type because it is a read-only endpoint. Okay, so if we've got a SQL warehouse, so we build it, we build a warehouse that has a SQL endpoint. I can connect to that and I can update things. I can play around with things. If I create a lake house that automatically spins up a SQL endpoint and I can connect to it, I can query it, but I cannot update data via the SQL endpoint, right? Yes, exactly. All right, makes sense. Yeah. So you're not just stuck in this browser though. So it's great that your SQL queries are automatically saving. You don't need to worry about losing anything if your browser crashes or something like that, or if you accidentally close all the tabs. Um, we can actually go to settings and I can pull this SQL connection string here. And that's the connection string that actually takes me to my workspace. So if we jump to some familiar tools like Azure Data Studio, for example, using that connection string, I have a connection to my bronze, silver, and gold databases. And they're just surfaced as a normal uh, relational database. And it's the same as well within Management Studio. So a nice familiar place. We can zoom in um, and we can actually have a look at those SQL endpoints as well. We can see the tables in our bronze. Um, we can see the tables in our bronze layer as well. So you can see those tables in there. Now, there is one table in there that isn't like the others. So all of those tables are inside our bronze zone and they're all delta tables. But that dbo.nyc taxi is actually a shortcut to another data lake that I've got. So it's another data lake that's part of another lake house implementation. And we've got a delta table in there for that NYC taxi data. And that is just surfaced through the one lake as if it's part of that same lake house. And I can uh, work with it. I can engage with it and run SQL uh, select statements against it, which is really seamless, to be honest. Yeah, makes sense. And there's an important point there, right? So when you brought those two lake houses into context for your for, for the warehouse, that wasn't moving data. That wasn't copying the data into a new area. You're not making a whole, you're not importing that data into a new workspace. It's just saying, actually, I just want to use this existing like SQL metadata to query the stuff in the lake because everything's yeah. in the lake. Your warehouse tables are delta tables in the lake. Your lake house tables are delta tables in the lake. And you're just bringing together a bunch of different shortcut tables to allow you to query those things. And so if one of those tables is a shortcut table itself it doesn't matter because it's all just data yeah. in the lake yeah yeah exactly i mean if i go to i've got a statement here for create table is select so i'm creating a table in my uk sales gold warehouse and i'm basing that on a select statement from my uk sales silver lake house and i can run that and it brings the data across between my lake house and my warehouse there so i'll actually bring your dedicated SQL pool fans will be happy. They've got a CTAS statement in there. The classic. <laughs> when tech. <laughs> cool. So yeah, just how that uh, database looks. If we go into bronze, I can go into DBO. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and under tables, we've got NYC taxi. So again, in here, it just looks like a regular table. I actually have to go back to my workspace. And if I go to that lake house inside UK Sales Bronze, it's at this point where I can see 
There's a tiny little indication there that shows that it is a shortcut table, that little link icon. So <laughs> that's where it tells me that actually this is sitting somewhere else, but everywhere else, I don't need to care about that. It's all just surfaced as one link. Makes sense. Nice and easy. Yeah. Okay. So if we're using warehouse, we're using warehouse because we want to use T-SQL to do update statements and things like that. We want to use T-SQL and connect via T-SQL only development environments such as Management Studio, such as Data Studio. We want to do yeah. things like write stored procs and write uh, SQL functions. We need to do that in the warehouse side of things. All makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All right, and then we get a bunch of objects, and those objects are all warehouse-specific things we'll see in that where it's see inside that workspace. But again, a workspace can have multiple warehouses, multiple lake houses. You can have a mix of these different things. The same as if you had a SQL Server, you can have a load of different databases. It's just we can have different things inside our workspace: databases, lake houses, Power BI reports, data pipelines. Warehouses yeah. is one set of artifacts we can have. Yeah, and it's all lake house under the hood because it's all Delta, yeah. so. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Anything else people need to know? Where should they get started with this? So yeah, jump into your, your uh, workspace. You can just create a new warehouse straight away from here. There's no configuring um, data warehouse units. There's no configuring uh, what kind of engine or size or anything like that. It's all just there for you. And I guess that's, yeah, that's, that's the big difference, right? So because it's not dedicated SQL calls, we don't have a compute node. Uh, well, we don't have a control node. Many, many compute nodes. We're not picking DWOOs. I miss DWOOs. But you're not having to say I want 500, 1,000, 1,500 data warehouse units and therefore controlling parallelism. It's actually based on the serverless engine originally. So it's the Polaris engine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's using all that stuff from the Polaris white paper. There's a whole YouTube video of going through the Polaris white paper, which is talking about the distributed query processor, which is a very cool way of managing a load of distributed tasks. Basically Spark, but on SQL. Um, there's all things to do with the data cells, which is how it manages the units of work it needs to do, which is basically RDDs in Spark, but done in SQL. But again, following just the way par like par uh, parallel engines tend to work, they've implemented that, but it's not just a serverless engine because it's good at writing data. Serverless yes. could not really write data very well. It couldn't control write. It wasn't very good at getting data into the lake, whereas this engine's much better, much more geared for it. So it's kind of somewhere in between dedicated and serverless. It is a new iteration of the Polaris engine with a lot of cool stuff in it. Yeah, you're getting the best of both worlds, to be honest. And yeah, it's abstracting away all of that configuration pain. Awesome. Sounds very good. All right. So I'm going to drag you back soon to talk about the other bits. We haven't talked about lake house. We need to talk about real time. We need to talk, talk about one lake itself. So uh, I cover. assume you'll join us in future. Yeah, of course. Sounds great. Amazing. Alrighty. So yeah, warehouse, tons of stuff in there, but so much of it will just be familiar. If you're used to writing SQL, used to building things in a SQL uh, warehouse environment, you can connect via Management Studio, you can use Data Studio, you can use SQL Notebooks in a Data Studio if you really want to and do all that kind of stuff. And it kind of feels so, so familiar. Um, you can use it to create a table and write data down to a lake and it's stored as Delta which has Parquet inside there. That's right, it's Delta, not Delta Parquet. But you can use that whole engine and it will all fit together quite nicely. Now you can do similar things on the Lakehouse side. We'll look at Spark SQL, we'll revisit all that side of the fence. But if you want to use T-SQL specifically, this is where you need to use it in that warehouse side of the fence. All right, so we'll do more videos. We'll cover the other elements of Fabric. We'll be doing more on that side. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers.